Good evening. Welcome to our channel, where we set out to explore and discuss wonderful great works of literature. While dressed in elegant clothing, because why, why the, the hell, hell not? not? So I suppose to begin with, we should probably just uh, apologize uh, for our long absence. Um, if you watched our last video, um, for ETA Hoffman video, you can see there's like three different levels of uh, gradation of quality, video quality. And it was just really unfortunate because our first uh, run through of it was like really off the cuff and like really emotional and really like insightful and it was a great spontaneous discussion and then of course we were so disappointed to see that the memory was full yeah it cut it off and it kept doing that so and, and we kept on trying again and again and again yeah. but um i think we hopefully have figured it out figured out a system that works but we apologize yeah. for the delay yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> um so just to kind of ease in this is going to be a rather short short and sweet video we're not going to go on any sort of long uh discussions on it because i don't think there really needs that much to be said for this yeah. uh, there's one so you'll, you'll recognize this uh publishing uh, house it's one of the <laughs> novella popular. the novella series here mm -hmm. and it's a melville melville house publish uh, publisher and this one's called uh the haunted bookshop and this is by christopher morley and i actually you know, I, I haven't heard of Christopher Morley as an author. Um, I was unfamiliar with any of his other works. And uh, this one just intrigued me just simply by its title. Um, but essentially, uh, he was an American author. He was born in Pennsylvania in 1890. Um, but the thing about, about him is that he got really popular after having uh, published... Um, uh, it's called Parnassus on Wheels. And so this book is actually kind of like a sequel mm -hmm. um, where one of the sort of the booksellers uh, ends up uh, opening up his own bookshop and uh, some sort of weird mystery uh, regarding his uh, bookshop sort of ensues. Mm -hmm. And his bookshop is uh, called, uh, it's, his name is Miss Mifflin. Mr. Mifflin. Mr. Yeah. Mifflin. He lives with his wife. Yeah. And then they have a guest who comes in who's one of Mr. Mifflin's friend's Daughter. daughters. Yeah. Not Titania. Titania. It? Is it Titania? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Titania. And they live in Brooklyn, actually. They're in like, it's the, the novel is set in 1919. So uh, near the, I guess, the like Edwardian period, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting period of time because you always imagine, I always associate with 1912 as the sinking of the Titanic. And I always use that as a marker when I'm looking at different periods of history. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very cozy book i would say it's yeah it's kind of if you're a book lover it's kind of this and you get the same sensation of being in a bookshop without having to be there which is kind of fun because we're probably all missing those cute little cozy used bookstores that no one's allowed to go yeah. in yeah. um so this was our way of exploring living it them. and exploring it through uh, an author which was kind of cool yeah and what's also interesting is that you know you end up learning about a lot of authors and writers who were famous at the time who you don't really hear about anymore yeah or yeah like i've never well i mean it's not like i'm that well read but i haven't heard of many of the authors who yeah a lot of them sort of he makes passing references obviously to ones that you know we might be more familiar with maybe tolstoy's war and peace or yeah, dostoevsky the but big ones but he the, makes a lot like there's sometimes pages of Yes, book lists, references. So, lists of books to and he read. apologized in one one um, chapter. He's like, if you're not a book bookseller, then don't bother reading this or something. Well, like literally, that. there's a whole there's a whole chapter devoted to funny. a bunch of book sellers talking about the book publishing industry and having like a lively debate on, you know, yeah, the merits of uh, contemporary publishing and the drawbacks to contemporary yeah, publishing. Yeah. So yeah, it's very. Um, if you're really into books, like <laughs> especially publishing, like definitely recommend this book. Uh, but um, one of the things that happens in this book is there's a mystery, and the mystery is surrounding uh, one particular book, and it's Thomas Carlyle's Oliver Cromwell. Um, mm. So it it goes missing, and uh, it reappears in the bookshop, and it, and it goes missing again, and then all these people in the newspaper are looking for it, and uh, there are all these weird shenanigans happening. There's all this like intrigue surrounding this particular yeah. book. And it, it's funny because it's kind of playing on this idea because the Mr. Mifflin's like, if everyone just read books, 
the world would be a better place kind of thing, or we could prevent wars, or we could prevent these things from happening, or actually if a book got into the wrong hands, it could create a war, and like they kind of took it back. Um, and then this book goes missing, and he's wondering why, why there's all this, what's the importance of this book in particular going missing. Yeah. And what, what I found, like, based on your point, like, what you were saying there, I, I found it very interesting because he essentially takes almost, like, a very psychological approach to books. That, like, books... <laughs> our, our dog is doing some weird things, as always. <laughs> I just, I have to show you guys because it's too weird to, like, not... It's like... Can it's you... Like, it's like whistling. But wait, that's just his crotch. I just book. like showing his crotch. That's... <laughs> he's, wa he's wagging his tail. Wagging his tail and then, oh man, it's just making some weird noises. Anyway. What he does interesting in this book is he almost uses books as therapy and almost like, um, almost like psychoanalysis, if if you will, or psychotherapeutic strategies, mm -hmm. where like each type of book, you know, it, it it says here, I can see just by looking at you that your mind is ill for lack of books, and I think there's something there's something true to that, like this idea that. You know, there is a healing effect to books. Um, books can open your mind and can act as a friend or as a, as a balm uh, with certain turbulent emotions and sadness and grief and all these different feelings, right? Um, and another thing was, I think another, it's also known, it's famous for this idea that like uh, books are, uh, uh, bookshops are dangerous places because each book is like an explosive, a bomb waiting to go off, you know, just sitting there just like kind of like, <clears throat> In potential waiting waiting for an explosion because if you think about it in terms of like ideas mm -hmm. books contain ideas and ideas shape the world and you know how a book is read and the content of a book can actually like really do you know quite a bit in mm -hmm. the real real world mm -hmm. right so yeah i, I found Hence that why they're, they're hard to find in communist countries right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, and you know, Other than propaganda books. well, it's also like control of different types of books and what can be published and what can't be published, mm -hmm. and so it's um yeah, I would say there's a bit of a romance in there too. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of a romance with the. I dabble in that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Dabbled in a little mystery. But it's generally a, like a light-hearted book, mm -hmm. um, and if you know if you're interested in finding out about sort of uh, lesser-known authors. You might want to be a reference for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if you just want to escape into a cozy little bookshop and get kind of all the, the nice feels from <laughs> from doing that without having to go in one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there is there is something to be said about the idea of um, you know, going to an actual physical shop and seeing books rather than you know ordering something online. Mm -hmm. You already know what you're getting. But, you know, there's a serendipity, serendipity to almost like stumbling across a book that you didn't even know that you needed. So there's that sort of, ch you know, this mm -hmm. chance encounter, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, it's really, it's it, it really evokes nice feelings. So, yeah. so, so tell us if you've ever gone into a used bookstore with a fanatic bookkeeper or if you've wondered if a bookstore is haunted. Yeah, I should say <laughs> the place is called the Haunted Bookshop. But in a sense, it ended up being haunted in a way, too. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're not giving any of the plot kind away. Of. So. Kind of, but not really. Kind of, but not really. There you go. Well, thank <laughs> you for joining us. Uh, we promise to be a little bit more consistent in the, the future with our videos. Uh, we still have a number of books that we want to share with you. Um, so, so be patient with us. Yeah, be patient with us. Uh, and, um, you know, keep in touch. And we will see you next time. Have a good evening.